Oh, I'll, I'll message him one second. Hey, what's up? Hi, guys. Uh, this is we're here. This is the Daniel Star Trek Cast. I'm your host, Daniel, and we are here with Jacob. What's up, Jacob? Hey, guys. What up? So, did you see the uh, the episode of Star Trek uh, episode three of Star Trek Discovery called uh, "Conscience is for the Kings"? Or no, no, it's like "Context is for Kings." Uh, that was a good. Yes, episode. I did. I have to say, loved it because of the science stuff, and it was amazing. And I have was, to say, why is that commander? keeping that beast on the ship, whatever that beast was, like, man, like, why is he keeping the beast on the ship? And for what reason? That's the question. Yeah, we're going to, we're going to find out. I'm really fascinated to see what, why is, um, like, why is he holding that beast there? You know, it's like he has a collection of all kinds of things. But I hated the way that that Klingon died. You know how the Klingon was like, and then the yeah. base took him. I was like, "Holy cow! What the hell?" Yeah, people are complaining, like, "Oh, you know, like people are like complaining." That's not how a Klingon should act. I'm like, that's the new Klingon. Like, he's like, he was like really scared and shit, and he yeah, was like, yeah. Shh. He was telling I was like, him, like, "Wow, that's push. that's oh my god, terrible!" How that Klingon just got taken, like, just oh my god. I was like, "Oh my gosh," but it was pretty good. I love that scene. That scene was probably like the best scene ever. It was. It was. It was like something from a horror. You know, didn't it feel like, do you watch do you watch Doom? Do I watch what? Have you seen Doom? Doom? Yeah. I have not. Okay, it's like it's like if it, it felt a little bit like Doom. A little bit. You know, it's like a horror movie. It was cool. Yeah, because of the um like the people on the ground, like the injured kind of Starfleet people on the ground, injured, but like blood, you can see blood and gore and stuff. Yeah, they were, they were all like twisted and shit like that. Yeah. Yeah. I actually found it was pretty needed for that Star Trek episode. Like for, for Star Trek, like, you know how you said you wanted a dark, darker Star Trek? That that showed that that can be that Star Trek can be dark now, like that. Yeah. What did you think about that scene? It was good. I loved it. I have to say about the molecule bit, like when when at the very start, how uh, they were on that ship, how the prisoners were on that ship with Michael. And they were like talking about Michael, like how basically she betrayed her team on the ship in the very first two episodes, right? You know yeah. how they were talking about Michael? I was like, how come you're bashing Michael once when your prison is on the ship all together? Why don't you work as a team and just not, you know, bash Michael <laughs> like that? Yeah. I was like, I'm kind of sorry for Michael. Yeah. Like, I know people are like, are, like, saying shit, like, oh, how come we didn't see this in the other series? How come we didn't see that in the other series? Well, I don't know. Like, okay, if, you know, like, it would have been much better if they just moved forward, you know, and shit like that. Yeah. But, you know, like, uh, I, I don't know. I mean, they keep on saying that there's a plan, right? So, like, I, whatever. What do you think this episode's leading up to? I'm hoping that there's going to be some kind of, okay, because remember, okay, if you saw Enterprise season five, um, I okay, no, 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 there wasn't a season five, but Enterprise season five would have, would have dealt with, um, would have dealt with time travel. Okay. So it, it would have been really cool. It would have been really cool. And um, you know, we would have seen, like, you know, like Archer would have came into contact with Kirk or Cisco or, you know, like um, Janeway. We would have seen, we would have seen um, all the captains get together. And it would have been great. It would have been awesome. And um, that would be cool. I, I, I'm really excited for the future because they could revive these unused scripts, you know, because they were working on them. 
And I have to ask Daniel, what did you think about the like the molecule bit when she, uh, that commander guy, the new commander, uh, who's a bit of a douchebag, I feel. Uh, what did you think he meant by like the flying, like she can travel, like she can fly to other planets by using those molecule things or whatever? Yeah, those were cool. No, you know, like, like, actually was like, well, man, that, that would be a cool way to travel. Like, instead of traveling normally, you could travel by those things in a way. Exactly. And I think this is how they're going to travel through, to, to, you know, like, for example, uh, in a few uh, in a few months, I think. Okay, right now, Jonathan Frakes, the guy who played number one on Next Generation, like, he's going to, he's directing an episode involving the mirror universe and i love the mirror universe i really do because there's no federation in the mirror universe it's all it's a terran empire the terran empire is like this evil version of the federation and they don't make peace they uh they conquer so that's cool and they conquer planets and they take civilizations by force and um they're all dark and evil and shit like that. And, it, and I just like, I love the mirror universe and, um, Oh my God. I am so excited for the mirror universe coming. I, I'm so excited that Jonathan Frakes is directing. It's going to be good because if you don't, if you know, Jonathan Frakes also directed first contact, one of my favorite star Trek movies. Like, First Contact was the best Next Generation movie there ever was. It was the best Star Trek movie. Well, I don't know what... Okay, uh, Wrath of Khan would be the, 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 the best TOS movie. And uh, First Contact would be the best TNG movie. And then, I mean, for some reason... You know that girl that my, uh, Michael is in the, like, the same room as? Like, the, like let's, let's just call them roomies, you know, besties. Uh, what do yeah. you think about that girl that, who says she's going to be the next? Who says she wants to be the next commander? Oh yeah, a captain. She wants to be a captain. I think yeah. she's okay. You know, um, Tilly. She's okay. I actually thought mm, she probably wouldn't make like a good com like c captain for the ship, but she would make. I don't know. Like that's the, that's the thing. Like she, at that first when I saw her, I was like, yeah, she's a bit annoying, and then at for, for the for the second part, I was like, you know what? Maybe you could do something great. What, what, what happened? To, what happened to Chris? I have no idea. Did he just come in just then? Yeah, he came in. You know, just then. Sorry, viewers, about this. <laughs> We're just waiting on someone else to come in. Hey, hey Chris. Oh, yeah, we can hear you. How you doing, buddy? There we go. So what did you, uh, what did you think about the episode, Context is, is for Kings? Hey. All right. Awesome. Doing good. How about you guys? Yeah, we're doing good. Huh? Oh, can you, can you hear us? Oh, that's good. Let me get my headphones so I can hear you better. Yeah, I can hear you. It's just kind of hard for some reason. One sec. Okay, what's the topic? It's episode yeah, three of Star Trek Discovery. Oh, nice. Okay, cool. I got some things I can say about that. Awesome. Oh, I can hear you guys now. Oh. Oh, so what have you guys said about it so far? Well, we were talking about like the molecule bit, like the the, uh, the molecules, what the captain was, well, the commander was talking about. The spores? How they can like travel to other distance with those molecules. Yeah. What did you think about that? Uh, the physics is all wrong, but I an interesting concept. I think it would have been better to do that uh, Further in the future, Star Trek, and try to do it into the past. So I, I think that they're going in the wrong direction with it. Okay. Because how does that how does that play into the timeline now? 
That's my only concern. And let's say it completely backfires on them. You're not leaving much room because we already know what the future looks like. So, I mean, where are they going to go with it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It can't, we, it can't possibly work or you're going to shift the whole paradigm of the future for Star Trek. So, we know that it has to fail. So, uh, what I was telling Danny is I actually think this is a prelude to Section uh, 31. Ooh. Is what I... I think that this is kind of hinting that's what Discovery really is, is uh, the birth of Section 31. What, and I have to ask, what are you liking about Michael's character? I don't like Michael's character. I like, the, I like a lot of the other characters. and not liking her character too much. Uh, it's, she's very one-dimensional. Yep. And it seems like she's trying to stay on the outside. But it feels so forced that it, it's just, like, unrealistic. Like, uh, when the captain offered for her to uh, join Discovery, she said no. And it's like, really? Go to prison or join Discovery? Not that hard of a decision. It just seems like she was trying to cause some dynamic there that shouldn't have been there. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I, I know exactly what you mean and what it, i have to ask too like um what did you think about the beast that the c captain commander is holding on the ship now the end uh, the beast uh, what do i think of the beast uh, mm, that's where i that's where i think it ties into section 31 this 31 section 31 did a lot of really Despicable things in the name of Starfleet. <laughs> uh, that's why I think that that's where they're kind of leading, leaning towards, which is a different angle for Star Trek, and I think that's awesome. But in the same turn, it doesn't feel like Star Trek at the same time, you know, because I I can see Section Thirty One doing it. If it turns out not being Section Thirty One, it's not Star Trek. Then, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm hoping that's where it's going. And that's what they're trying to show is the creation of Section 31. If, if that's not what they're going for, it, it's a huge mistake. Because I don't see anyone ever in Star Trek taking a creature and imprisoning it. So eh, it'd be nice if that's what they were going for with Section 31. If not, then I don't know what to really think of it. Because that would show a nice little undertone in Star Trek that we hadn't have not seen, other than briefly in DS Nine. Yep. I don't know if Daniel's still here. Daniel, are you? So still here? I'd like to see. No, no, I'm here. I'm here. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So it's really, well, we were... really good. I wonder what they're going to do with that creature as well. You know, because they're, they have that creature behind that force field, and um. Well, it looks like it's going to get out. Yeah, uh, from the previews. Of course, we'll get out. I, it, so get out at some point. <laughs> but I hope. I really hope they're not going to kill it. I mean, I, I kind of. I think it's kinda actually. I kind of. I actually kind of hope they do, because it show that they're not going to follow the Star Trek formula. Yeah, and that, I think that that the Star Trek formula really holds back on which what you can and can't do uh, in Star Trek, because norm in Star Trek. If this is old Star Trek, the creature would eventually be freed and it'd be a happy ending. I'd like to not see that be the case. Yeah. I'd like, I, I'd no, like to see a dark undertone to it and not everything's always roses. Exactly. Which is why I think, that, which is why I'm hoping this is the birth of Section 31. Well, there, there is, yeah, you know, they're saying that, the, you know, the reason that, that 31 at the end of the registry number is a big hint that it, it is section 31. Yeah, exactly. But I, the cast, I, I think it's pretty cool. Cool. Soren is, I like Soren. He's cool. Is that his name? The big alien dude. Oh. Um, I like him and the captain. I think they kind of overstep the bounds of what a captain can and can't do. As, I mean, he spoke as if he was an admiral or something, and he's not. 
like he has the freedom to just uh, waive her from going to prison. That just didn't make sense to me. Exactly. So, you know, he's so I, like, he's awesome. So either he has more power than what he's saying, or there, there's more complexity there than what we're seeing right now. Hopefully there is. If not, then I'm going to be a little bit disappointed. Um, but it, by far, so far, it's the best episode. I liked it better than uh, two. Uh, two was probably my least favorite so far. One I thought was pretty decent. Yeah, two uh, was two, low. Two was, re- I didn't like, it was, yeah, I just didn't like it. It just went the wrong direction. Yeah. So, I don't know. Uh, but so far, I like it. it. It's pretty decent. Hopefully, they get more into the character development. I have to ask, too. Uh, what did you think of uh, uh, Michael's roommate, Tilly? How she was like, I'm going to be like... Oh, God, I do not like her. No. I do not like her at all. It, it seemed like they were just going for... Uh, they stuck a character in there and they said, oh, we need somebody who's just really quirky and threw her in and she's a little too quirky and a little too annoying for my case. It just seems like she was just jammed in there. It it didn't seem natural, you know what I mean? Yeah. I was actually saying that to Daniel before. I was like, she got a bit flat. Like, it, she just... It just wasn't. It wasn't like the right part for her. Like they just wanted right. to chuck her in there because they wanted to chuck her in there. It's like, okay, um, yeah, she's okay looking, but why make her her character that way? It's like makes no sense. Well, she has too. Uh, what's the word? Too. She came off too neurotic, and then not too neurotic, and then. She was a people pleaser, but then she wasn't. And it's like they didn't know what they wanted to do with her. So they just, she was everywhere. And it's just like, what the heck? So I, I don't, I didn't like her at all. Okay. And hopefully they get rid of her really quick. Yeah, <laughs> hoping to. I totally agree with you on that. Yeah, I um, think it was really I think it was really, you know how, how when they were talking, uh, you know, I think it was like Lieutenant Sent, Sent, whatever his name was, right? He was talking to, um, uh, what's her name? Uh, could, um, Berman, Burn, Burnham or something? Berman. Burnham? And he was yeah, like, Berman. okay, um, what are we talking about? Physics or biology? And he's like, are you, are you dumb or something? On the quantum level, there is no difference between, um, what was it saying? I don't know, physics, uh, biology or whatever. physics. Yeah, there's yeah, no difference between chemistry and biology, yeah, even though there is. And there like, is. I just, I just think it was very fascinating when he was like saying stuff like that, you know. It's like he didn't even know what he was talking about. <laughs> it it really came across that they wanted he they wanted him to seem smarter than he actually was, and he wasn't. Yeah, yeah. It he kind of failed. Yeah, it seems like him and his boyfriend were working on something that like it's like super top secret. I do like that they they made that really subtle, you know? They didn't, like, throw it in their face that they're gay. They just made it subtle. They didn't, like, toss that in our face. So, JJ tosses that crap in your face. They kind of did a good job and kept it in the background where, yeah, he has a boyfriend. But they didn't really come out and say that. I did like that. Yeah. I have to say, um, what would you both rate it this episode? For the series so far, it's the best. So, and I would only say that that that's a six. Okay, I, I, yeah, I would say if they, if it was it, it was the best too, you know. But you know, it kind of sucked they destroyed that ship, like the the Glenn, the USS Glenn, and that's right. Like, it was like the more advanced sister ship. And I just like it really sucks because like holy shit they destroyed that ship who knows how much it costed and they lo- they just threw away a bunch of money now I know well, money in the future but well yeah but yeah that's the thing there is no money in the star in Starfleet so it didn't really matter they could have kept it and salvaged it you know 
yeah. You know, hey, do you think? Do you but it would make sense if it was Section Thirty One. Yeah, because that's what Section Thirty One would do. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know. It, just, I'm with you on that. They shouldn't. Have, they shouldn't have destroyed it. But, yeah, but on the other hand, they were trying to keep it out of Klingon hands because they're like, well, the Klingons are going to get it, and they're going to like reverse engineer technology, and um, you know, and I don't think the Klingons are that smart though. They'll just probably get it and they'll just probably rip it apart or something, whatever. But yeah, Klingons. You know, I've never that, been known for like brilliance. Like yeah, when, when they went on the, on the Glen, did you like that Klingon who was like, you know, he was like, shh, and then he got eaten? Mm, no, it, that, I was indifferent on that. It didn't really matter. It was a throwaway character. That's all it was. I that You have those in shows. The character's just there to fill space. That's what it seemed like. And there was a lot of filler in this episode, too. So, I mean, we'll see where it goes. Um, I, myself, canceled CBS Access after the second episode. Um, and I've had CBS Access since November, and the second episode was enough for me to just be like, yeah, I'm done. <laughs> for me, I just um, every Every Australian downloads things they say, so I'm like, eh, I'm just going to download it. It's more easier. Yeah, I... It wasn't... That's the only reason why I even had CBS Access because everything that's on Access is yeah. uh, on Netflix or Hulu. It so. is like the most ridiculous thing though. Like with like they have to get people to pay for it to watch more certain episodes. It's like really? Well, yeah, and then well, I mean the things that I don't like that they they've done is like it was supposed to all come out at once. Yeah. Then they were like, Oh well, we'll do only half of it. And then whenever they finally do release it, now they're doing it once a week and it's yeah. like I, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna pay for what is it supposed to be? I, I don't even know how many episodes are even scheduled. I think I'm not gonna pay for it for up to 24 episodes, okay. which is 24 weeks. I'm not gonna pay. Yeah. What three months for for it? That's 30 bucks for one season. Not gonna do it. I'll just wait until it hits Netflix. Because <laughs> it will end up on Netflix eventually, like. It'll end up on Netflix or Hulu, one of the two. I mean, mm. Hulu gets most of CBS's stuff anyways. So it, if, it, if it bombs, it's going to end up on Hulu. Yeah. Um, and f from the looks of it so far, it, it's not doing too well. And out of the whole Star Trek era, this is probably my least favorite. And yeah. I'm not a fan of Enterprise at all. And Enterprise. I think Enterprise is actually better than this. Yeah. I, I'm not a fan of it. I've watched every episode, though. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. But I'm not, like, with Deep Space Nine, I wasn't like, gotta watch every episode. Or with Next Generation, gotta watch every episode. Or with Voyager, gotta watch every episode. This is kind of, eh. We'll see. <laughs> and this episode really didn't give you a bang. It didn't seem like it's worth the 10 bucks that CBS thinks that it's worth. For what? The next couple of episodes? Yeah. No, it's, I don't think it's worth it. It falls yeah. flat. Character development's going really slow and she's very one-dimensional and I don't think she's that great of an actress either. She's Her acting's... Don't a little part compared to the other actors. This. Like, she was good in Walking Dead. She was like great, fantastic in Walking Dead as Sasha, if you made, if you have watched Walking Dead before. But it's just like the thing is, it's this isn't like, Walking Dead. Build her more up, but they just don't know how to yet. That's the thing. But I have a feeling she will improve in more episodes to come. Michael will, but that's like that is the thing too. Like, but will she? become more better in this. I don't know. Who knows? The thing is, is it, if the writing keeps keeps falling flat like it has been with, with her, and they're trying to uh, do the stubbornness in her, which is absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. Um, nobody in their right mind would be as stubborn as she is. Oh, yeah. Even... 
It, it's just not logical. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And she, and she's supposed to be a Vulcan too. Or she's raised by Vulcans. And Vulcans yeah. aren't like that. Yeah. No, they're not. Yeah. You know, I think so, they made the Section Thirty One ship because, like, you know, people are like nowadays people don't want to burdened by all of these rules and regulations that Starfleet you know, usually has. Like in the other shows, like ne Next Generation, for example, oh my god. How many rules and regulations that really that really held the show back, you know? Oh, and yeah, it, it did. It did. The thing is, is I, we don't know if this is, this is section of 31. If it isn't, it's going against all... All of Star Trek history, so it it'll tick off a lot of fans. So it, it has to be Section Thirty One. If it's not, then it's it's going against uh, the Star Trek re regulations. Well, yeah, it's going against everything Star Trek stands yeah. for. Yeah. So I don't know. Uh, the war was interesting. I thought the war was kind of cool. Exactly. Um, cool. I love that. So for anybody who missed it, I just love sent sentiments or statements or whatever his name is. His like, you know, his whole um, speech to Burnham when Burnham, Burnham said like, what are we talking about, biology or physics? And he goes, are you really so naive as to see them as different? And then, yeah, just like, okay. And then, wait a second, you know. And then he said, on the quantum level, there is no difference between physics and biology. And then like the way he was like talking about God, it was actually pretty interesting. Just like no. Well, the thing is, is okay. I, I hold a PhD in physics, and I will tell you, he's freaking wrong. <laughs> There's a huge difference. So I, it was just their, their attempt to make him sound smarter and to stick it to her, and it was it was ridiculous. So ah, that I didn't too much care for. I'm like. This dude's an idiot. Whoever wrote that line needs to be uh, taken out back and whipped. Yeah. Uh, they're two different, uh, two different schools of thought, so they're going to be completely different. I mean, the math is going to be similar. The functions are going to be similar, but the outcomes are going to be massively different. Because yeah. physics and chemistry just do not mix. Uh, we have one minute, guys. Uh, any uh, final discussion? Man, I really want to know. I really want to know what they they want to do with that animal, with that beast thing. You know, I mean, and you know what? They created that thing. That wasn't a natural life form. They created that thing in a laboratory. When they, they hinted at it, maybe yeah. And it was really interesting with those spores. I think. You know, well, I, I think if they go in the direction of thirty-one, this will be a good series. If they don't, it's going to fall flat. That's pretty much my final thought. It looks like they're going towards Section 31, but if that's not the direction they're going, I I'm going to walk away from the series uh, because it's not worth watching because it's just going off genre. Yeah. And it's yeah. not... But you know what? Those little, those little fl firefly things? They can those things were you. interesting. I have to say, like, those things probably got me hooked on to this episode. Those like, like little firefly things, how they were like... Those are spores. Like, they're they're like, spores. Things. It was like, oh, that's actually pretty interesting. Like those quantum spores? Uh, I gotta admit, the, the, the special effects in this, in this, this series is phenomenal. The acting, eh. Yeah. Michael awesome. needs... They, she needs some lessons. Uh, the rest of the crew, I think, is fine. The writing is falling kind of flat in some areas. They really need to get that under wraps. Uh, if they get that stuff taken care of, it, it'll, be an, it'll be an excellent series that can last eight or nine years. But if they don't get that under control, it's not going to. Yeah, Yeah, you know, I mean, totally it's, it's still good. Like, I'm, see, with those quantum spores, I'm pretty sure they can use those, not, not just to travel through space, but theoretically they can travel through time with it if they know how to use them. I'm pretty sure they can do that. You Which would be kind of cool. Like we we could see like Berman, like for example, maybe she she walks into that room, and she gets transported to like maybe like in the twenty three eighty, and we see the Enterprise E. Maybe she has to, maybe she goes in the Enterprise E. She sees all this cool technology. Maybe she steals a phaser or two and brings it back. Wouldn't that be cool? They would have next generation technology. Even but before. would she? So far, I don't think she would do something like that. 
well, maybe maybe they're like, you know, like maybe they, they find a way to go to the future. Like, well, you know what? We need to win this war. So we go to the future, take some technology, bring it back so we can, you know, use it. I think, I think in, in five episodes, we'll have a predictor of where the series is going. But before that, I don't think we're going to be able to know. It, we got to see what they're going to do with this monster first. If they kill him off, I can see a good future for this series. If they try to preserve its life. I don't see it going much further than this season. Well, they killed a yeah. the Klingon in the third episode, so there you go. Like with that base thing that they have yeah, captured, the they killed a the Klingon. Episode, so well, anything is possible. A whole, bunch of, a whole bunch of Klingons died in the first yeah. episode, second episode, in this episode. Like a whole bunch of them died again. So, holy crap! This series has been a bloodbath so far. Holy shit! The cat it's not as bad as. It's not as bad as some shows, but yeah, it, it, there's been a lot of casualties. But that that's expected in Star Trek. People yeah, die. Also, yeah, also, yeah. Also, that lady. You remember that lady who left the? Remember when in the beginning, when these little firefly things, when these little yeah. fire firefly things were eating. Those are were, spores, by the way. They're not fireflies. They're spores. They, they were they were feeding on the electrical equipment on the ship. And they yep. said, well, you know, it, un, until the, 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 the pilot, if she doesn't get get rid of it in time, will either freeze or suffocate. And then, and the tether broke, and you see the pilot, she flew off the ship. She was on top of the ship trying to get rid of all the things. But, yeah. then, but then the tether broke, and she flew off the ship. Did that woman die, or was she was she captured by some, another ship? They didn't say. So they I don't know. Say. I don't know. I'm thinking either A, the but, discovery got her, like Peter. Did, did the Millennium Falcon fly by and, and then maybe catch her? <laughs> oh my god. I, 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 okay. I, I didn't see the Millennium Falcon anywhere in this Star Wars episode. Yeah. So yeah, you know, it just I'm really, really, really interested in, in seeing the future of this series. I have know? a question, Daniel. Yeah. Because we were talking about it on on my show just a little while ago, and that you were in. Um, do you think that the Mirror Mirror Universe, because it was it was altered in the Enterprise timeline, that shortly after the Enterprise episode of the Mirror Mirror Universe, that the Mirror Mirror Universe altered the Prime Universe, where the Federation got a hand on the advanced technology ship? And thereby created this universe that we're in from the mirror mirror altercation afterwards. In other words, in other words, if you remember the, the Enterprise episode where Archer died and his girlfriend became the Empress of that thing, if shortly thereafter the Federation encounters the mirror universe again in the past, okay? And then by the time we get to Discovery, Discovery, they all have advanced technology where all the ships look like ships from the next generation and Voyager time. And all the technology is so advanced that Sarek can do a mind meld across the vastness of space that they could basically have technology with holograms and stuff. Yeah, that, that, that Sarek's a uh, little... Well, telepathic mind meld thing I think was just stupid crappy and yeah. technology wouldn't have done that for one uh, exactly Joseph so yeah. that would have had no bearing on that whatsoever it it was just well, they needed a cool they needed something cool to throw in there to say we can do something that something new and unique and it just goes against it goes against the genre period so could this technically be the prime universe, but slanted, like where it's a, it's it's a slightly altered prime universe because the technology no. was no, no, because they've already said it isn't. Well, they said that, but the ships are more advanced than next well, generation ships. Though. Well, of course it's going to be more advanced because it's a new show, and but it's they're in trying the past, to. Though. It's it's like way in the past. Yeah. Darker. Yeah, I know, but that's where I think that they're falling. They're not thinking things through. They just want to show. Every Star Trek is always about what what 
technology can we push? Where do we see technology going? That's right. what every Star Trek's but been the, about. But but and, except, well, when you go backwards, it's harder to do that because then you're right. You're, right. right. It, I do. I, I I agree with you there. But I don't think that they were thinking like that. Right. Um, oh, this is going to be a shift in the timeline or anything like that. Well, what do we think? Technology is going into the future, so we can put that into the show and try to. Uh, innovate the future. That's what Star Trek has always been about, is seeing innovation and trying to push it. That's it's what the they biggest, always do. But the biggest thing about Star Trek has been about is about, about uni unity and, like, everybody, you know, like, end of racism, end of all that different stuff. You know, it's That's so Roddenberry. Hard. That's Roddenberry. That's not what Star Trek's always been about. Well, uh, Roddenberry DS9, creates Star Trek, though, but it's... I understand Deep Space Nine was different because... It was dealing so with is Voyager. Yes. So is Voyager. Yes, because they were thrown all the way into the Delta Quadrant. They weren't even home. They were stuck in a whole different area of space. But what yes. I'm saying is what I'm saying is that by doing this with the technology, now are they trying to say that the that there are many different races of Klingons? Like, you know, we have in, in, in our world we have Italians, we have Japanese, Chinese, we have Spanish. Are they trying to say that these are all different types on their planet? There are all different types of Klingon races. And we just Families. didn't see... Right. I mean, different nationality, different Klingon nationalities. And that we yes. did not see this Klingon nationality up until now. Uh, that's possible. I, I, I'm not a fan of the Klingons in this new series. It's a departure from what the Klingons were. Right. Because if you notice, so, they did that with the Romulans. They made it where there was another Romulan part that we've never seen in Star Trek Nemesis. You know, there was different types of Romulans that we'd never seen before. So that's what they're trying to do with the Klingons now. They're trying to say, yes, they've always been there. You just didn't see them. But you'll see, maybe they get wiped out at the end of Discovery where, you know, Kirk never sees that type of Klingon. It could be that. Well, I mean, well, we do know, because Worf's even talked about it in uh, Next Generation, that Klingons screwed around with genetic yeah. manipulation. So they, they this were could be... from a virus that made them look human. Well, they it was explained explained, that in Deep Space Nine. It was, Nine. It, right. was in it. it was explained in an episode of Enterprise where they retconned it because well wasn't it deep space nine they, they explained well, it they, me, they went back they and started talk. the explanation in deep space nine which is what i was saying and okay. it carried over into enterprise uh but they've messed around with their genetics so this could be just a could be a form of that i don't know well, we have to well, see i can tell you i can tell you what gene roddenberry originally said because the the, the klingons with their ridges didn't appear until Star Trek the motion picture. Right. It, it was controversial even back then. And so Gene Roddenberry got criticized for it, and Gene Roddenberry said in an interview, well, I didn't have the budget or the special effects to right. do the Klingons the way I wanted to do them in the original series. So just imagine they always look that way. That's what Gene Roddenberry said. Just imagine they look, always look that way. But then... When Gene Roddenberry died, they decided to retcon it, where to explain why they looked physically different. Right. Which, which, which is fine, I think. I think it's fine too. I think they look good, different in a way. Like they look new and futuristic. I, I mean, if they explained it that there's many different types of Klingon, I think that would be cool because then it'd be like, oh, they're all part of the same. It is part of the prime universe. It's oh. Okay, I mean that would make sense because you know we've never seen that before. Just because we've never seen it before doesn't mean it exists. Look at look at the different species that we have in the ocean that we didn't know existed, and they're finding new species of fish and stuff like that that we really didn't know was there. Thousands and catalog species of, <clears throat> of, of different sharks and fish and octopus and all that stuff. You know they're finding new races of insects all the time. So why couldn't it be that there's different types of nationalities of Klingons? That how would the humans know that if they're not on? Well, these Klingons clearly lived in space from just what we've seen so far. So this could just be a space-bearing uh, family of Klingons. I see. 
this would have worked so much better if they put it like after Voyager, but I guess they have a plan on, like I said before, maybe like, you know, these little spores thing that they're going to, they're using to travel through space. Well, maybe they can travel through time. Theoretically, they can use it to travel through time. And uh, USS discovery fork drive. But anyway, go ahead. Possibly they could use it to travel through time. Maybe that's how they go to the mirror universe. You know, maybe they, she goes into one of those things and, that room with the spores and then she ends up in the in the on the mirror universe discovery that'd be kind of cool or the spores could actually be from that mirrored universe and they just somehow yeah. found a crack and slipped in mm -hmm. i'm just worried that if they keep going too advanced too advanced too advanced that they're going to shoot themselves in the foot when they try to explain things when they get into a you know continuity with with some of the stuff that existed that well i think they've been. already the introduction of these spores i think is a shot in the foot because this is way too mm -hmm. different Side compared to well, you wouldn't need you wouldn't need a large spaceship anymore. You just you'd have right. warp drive technology and just have small shuttlecraft, and you wouldn't even need warp drive. You just go across the universe, and then everything and would be meaningless and pointless. The second, well, like I told Daniel, at this point, we we know that that has to fail, and something has to happen that makes it unviable. Oh yeah, they'll kill a whole bunch of people or something. That's probably what's going to happen. Because if they don't, they're wrecking the timeline. They're I mean, just you absolutely save, wrecking. You could say Voyager the moment they got lost then. In five yep. seconds. Spores, the spores alone remind me too much of like the second or third season of uh, Sequest DSV. Because when that oh series, god, yeah, it does, doesn't you know, it? When that series first started. I loved it. I loved that series because they just showed what the possibilities of what could be and then when they cross then when they started getting too sci-fi-ish that's what really destroyed it for me and the spores is probably like lucas here has said that's going to be their ultimate shot in the foot and like like he's also saying why do you need a shuttle if all you've got to do is encase yourself in these spores and boom you're where you got to be and do the spores rip a hole in space you know how the warp drive was revealed in Next Generation the episodes that when they were getting too fast, it was causing damage to space. Could it be that the spores really damage space even further where that's why they don't use them in the future? Yeah, uh, possibly. There, oh, are dead, there are dead sectors that you can't use warp at all in, and they have somewhat explanations to some of them. But some of them they don't. This could be the explanation to some of the ones that we don't know the explanation to. So yeah. I... They're really, they either got to clear it up and really tie it into the prime universe or it's going to, it's going to kill, it's going to piss off, pardon my language, piss off a lot of Star Trek fans mm -hmm. because it, it'll be ripping the timeline apart and it won't, it's going to, what it'll basically <laughs> turn it into hard. is something like a star, a Stargate kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. You go into a room and poof, you're anywhere. That's kind of what I, it, I'm already upset about the android on the ship that they're not supposed to have any androids until like, you know, data. Lieutenant Commander well, Data. Like, that's an android. Uh, not a, a cyborg. He's a, yeah, he's a cyborg and it's a race of cyborgs at that. So kind of doesn't go against But okay, before okay, like um I just gotta um Jacob just says we have to end the cast now, but before we go, I gotta tell you I am so glad because um we think me and Chris, we think that this is a section thirty one ship. Like oh, that's a time travel ship, isn't it? Well yeah, yeah. This, this could be the first section thirty one ship. See, this is why I love section thirty one. They don't have to listen to the fucking rules that next generation put instill. Like they don't have to listen to the rules. They can just, you know, break the rules and do all kinds of dirty shit. That's why section thirty one is the best thing ever. I love it. A lot of other people love it. You know. Well, I, I hope I'm hoping that it's Section 31. If it's not, I'm gonna be very disappointed. Yeah, this has to be. I mean, the black badge is given away. It's Section 31, and and, and I'm pretty black sure. Alert. What's his name? What? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. What's his name? That was that was a phrase they used in Episode Three. Black alert. Yeah. yeah. All right. Did anybody notice the uh, tribbles and oh, Lieutenant okay. Khan? Anybody no, else notice that? No, I didn't. Did Lieutenant yep, I Khan? Did. Yeah, Lieutenant Khan, as uh, she's coming onto the ship after they come out of the uh, shuttle bay, and she's going to meet the captain, 
Uh, listen to the background. They page a uh, Lieutenant Khan. When they get when she gets in there to talk to the captain, uh, there's a triple in the room. Yep. I um, I and you know. actually get to see the triple for about four. I was gonna say, you know what? The reason, remember, remember, at, remember in, at, at the begin, at the end of, of Star Trek season four, uh, Enterprise season four, Daniels yep. left all that future technology in his quarters, right? Uh huh. Well, they probably brought that future technology back to Starfleet, obviously, and that's why technology is more advanced. Well, I just said that with the with the with the mirror mirror stuff. That they, they probably got it from the mirror mirror. That's why they, I just said that earlier. Um, no, I mean, what I'm saying is they got that technology from Daniels. Um, Daniel it could be. Yeah. It could be. Yeah. Oh, from Enterprise. Daniel from Enterprise. He was a futuristic type. And the future guy. could be the reason for the yeah. Mirror Mirror episode, like I said. They might be. Future guy. They either came from it or they uh, do all this stuff. Could well, that's, that's one thing I've whole. always wondered is they never answered who the hell future guy was. We need to know those answers. Who was he? Yeah, at least, even if you don't want to continue that storyline, at least have one episode where they explain it. Because... Otherwise, just a mystery without resolution. I thought it was like a Vulcan, but you never know. It could have been a Vulcan. Well, it could have been like whatever. You know. Yeah, this cast is about to end, guys. So I just want to say, Daniel, oh, we're going to end on. We got one more minute left, right? I just want to say one thing. See, okay, look, if this isn't the prime universe, right? Okay, what if this is the prime universe? But technically, it's like, okay, think, okay, you know how a building has many levels, right? Mm. Think, of, think of a universe as a building. But a building, but a universe is a building with infinite levels, right? Yeah, a universe yeah, yeah. is a building with infinite levels. <laughs> so, uh, well, I, I, universe, I, I say one thing about Future Guy before we, we depart. Rick Berman was interviewed about Future Guy after he left Star Trek, and he said, uh, I wasn't sure who Future Guy was because the 